Hi and welcome. My name is Lawrence Baker and this video is going to be about testing website performance for photography websites. Why I say photography, because I'm a photographer, but also it's important because photographs slow web pages down. Images take up, someone said once, 90% of all traffic on the internet and Google don't really like them because they, they offer some context, I suppose, but they're just images. Google might be able to read what they are, but Google like text. So if you've got a photography website, you're already on a, a sticky wicket as well. So you've got to make sure that your site loads fast. Now, the things we can control definitely are our copy and our photographs, the actual file size. The thing is, most of us are on Wix, Squarespace or whatever now, or WordPress, and there's lots we cannot do. But on WordPress, you have a little bit more control, but with Wix or Squarespace, you definitely don't. So there's certain caveats about using those website builders because at the moment, some of their web pages, Wix and Squarespace, take a hell of a long time to download. And if you think 31 is bad, I've seen five for a website from a very famous photographer that uses Squarespace. So that's not very good. That's Google saying your site is pants, basically, on, on mobile. The reason I'm not going to dwell with PageSpeed Insights is because people in the web performance business are telling me via YouTube videos or reading that basically PageSpeed Insights from Google is too harsh. And they need to refine it. And I agree with that. So do look at it, but take it with a pinch of salt. That time to interactive, which is nearly 10 seconds, it's based on mobile. I don't know what they're simulating in terms of networks, etc. They're throttling the connection or whatever, or simulating that. But honestly, I've tested my site, this particular page on a mobile, on a bad 3G network, and 9.9 .9 seconds? No, more like two or three, but that's really harsh. But anyway, I've got a low score. Take notice, if it talks about images, take notice of what it says. Minimize main thread work, which is 11.8 seconds. And if I click here, maybe, maybe I should be looking at some of my plugins. But I'm not a WordPress developer. I do understand web development, but I'm not an expert in WordPress. So I might have to get an expert in to look at my site and say, no, no, you've got a problem with this. Get rid of that plugin, use this plugin, that type of thing. But yeah, it's pretty awful at the moment, but I think it's a bit too harsh. Now, the next one is Ping Dom Tools, Swedish site. I believe they use PageSpeed Insights, but not with Lighthouse, because Lighthouse is the method they use now, and Lighthouse appears in developer tools, and I'll show you that in a minute. But basically, I don't think they use the newer Lighthouse method, but they come up with their own results. I've got a grade of 74. Whether that's for mobile or whatever, whether there's any throttling being done, I've no idea. But basically, it tells me I've got an F score, make fewer HTTP requests, compress components with GZIP, which I thought I'd done actually. But it doesn't give me a lot of information. The waterfall is there showing me the sort of download times. And that's the first thing that got downloaded, which is the HTML page itself. Then the fonts, you can see stuff coming in, etc., etc. Second page will probably be some of the photographs. So go through. Oh, it's JavaScript. It tells you there, actually. Then I'll start coming to the images soon, I'm sure. Yeah, there's an image there. So if I click on it, it's the loader GIF. Um, I should go further a bit, actually. F try and find another one. My images will probably be last. Yeah, there's an image there, as you can see. There's a lot going on, but I don't think it's telling you a lot, really. I think the other one I'm going to show you, GT Metrics, is better. But do use it. But it's more difficult to understand how to correct things with Pingdom than it is with this next one, which is GT Metrics. Now, I cannot simulate a mobile phone unless I pay them, basically, a subscription each month. Vancouver, because I'm not logged in, by the way. Vancouver, Chrome Desktop, 94% I've got on page speed. Meant to be the same page speed there, but whether they're using Lighthouse or come up with their own method, I don't know. But 94% is a lot better than even, let's say, desktop of 78. So it is confusing all this, but why I like GT Metrics is when you untwirl stuff, and I'm on page speed at the moment, it tells you exactly what's causing the problem, which whereas Pingdom don't. It's saying you've got two files there with exactly the same contents with different names. It could be that my theme's doing this, one of the plugins, my CDN. So I don't know what's causing it. They're not huge files, but it's not ideal. 
So if I untwirl that, I can look at the next most important thing, which is avoid CSS at import. So I've got all those there. But, you know, 83 is not bad score. Then I get to 92, et cetera, et cetera. And then I'm basically on 100 or 99. So most things are okay. Fully load time, 5.3 seconds. If I ran the test again, it'll probably come out with a different time. So, you know, Ping Dom was probably saying, oh, I can't remember what Ping Dom was saying there, 1.44. But that's from uh, Frankfurt. So, you know, it's a bit of a gray area, all this. But basically, if it says something about your images, act upon it. Why slow is Yahoo? The waterfall is the chart, of, of course. It's much, much better than Ping Dom, really. And it, especially in a way, it warns you about things. And when you click, what's this mean? Read more, etc. So it's quite good. So I like GT Metrics. It's probably been very kind to me with 94% there. But it is what it is, and I've tested other people's sites with the same sort of tool on the same settings, Vancouver and Chrome Desktop, and they're not doing very well. I'm, I'm talking about other photography sites. So uh, I think I'm doing all right. But according to PageSpeed Insights for mobile, I'm not. So there are the three top online tools, but I actually like to use developer mode. So developer mode is inside every browser on desktop, whether that's Safari, Opera, Chrome, or Firefox. Now, the way you get to it is different for every browser, but there is a keyboard shortcut, which is common to all desktop browsers. It's Alt or Option, Command or Control, I. Now, on a Windows system, doesn't matter what browser you're on, that would be Alt, Control, I. On a Mac, US Mac, it would be Option, Command, I. On a non-US Mac, because they have different keyboards, it would be Alt, Command, I. Let's just do the keyboard shortcut. Alt or Option, Command or Control, I. Now, I've got it on default because if you want it on default, you, you've, you've had a problem, click on those three dots, the panel menu, go to Settings, which is F1 on your keyboard, but go to the bottom and go Restore Defaults and Reload. Because it does throw you, because you might undock it one day, then you get tired of using it, to put it politely, and then you just come here, click on that, go to Settings, as I said, go to the bottom, and restore defaults and reload. So let's close that down. I don't like seeing it there. So what I'm going to do, the dot that is, I'm going to click again and put it to the bottom because I'm on a large screen. I'm also going to drag it up. You can also zoom in on this as well if you can't read it properly. I'm not going to take you through anything else but the images because as photographers, that's what we care about. So the next things are quite important. It's network. You can disable cache, but I want to show you something first. Hide data URLs and use image. And then it's saying we well, need to have some information. You need to reload the page. You can come up here and play around with this rather than using disable cache in the developer. Normal reload is command and control R. Hard reload, shift command and control R. Empty cache and hard reload doesn't have a keyboard shortcut, but that definitely ensures that it has to go to the server to get everything because your browser has a cache where it stores stuff, obviously. So if I keep that unticked for the time being and go command or control R, it's going through, I'm only seeing the images, and it's coming from memory cache because I've done this before. But if I tick disable cache or come up here and do that, empty cache and hard reload and do a, a normal reload now, not a hard one, command control R, it has to go to the server to get th those resources. So that's what browser caching is all about. And basically, I've set mine up for a year. <laughs> that's quite a long time, and I'll show you what it means in a minute. But basically, that's what I've done because using the user's cache is really good. Now, unless they've cleared out their cache um, within a year, let's say, they're going to have to basically download the site. It's not a problem. But if you want your site to work fast and someone's coming back to your site all the time and it's being loaded from the cache, they're going to be happy because they haven't got any network latency causing problems. But there's still talking going on between the server back and forth, of course, that will always happen. But it says, no, you know, nothing's changed. You might as well use the browser cache. So anyway, disable cache on, hide data URLs. It just gets rid of a few bits of junk you don't really need to see. IMG for image. And also, I don't like to see this. I think it's called the overview. Click on the cog there and untick show overview. Go like that to close it down. Not the end of the world, but it helps a little bit. Now, status 
is HTTP status 200 means everything's fine. If I go from image back to all, which is all of this, if I sort on status, you can see I've got a 400. That's a HTTP status, meaning can't actually find that file. So it will always show up in red. So I don't often need status. So I just right click and get rid of status. The next one I do is right click again. I add in protocol. Then I right click again, go down to response headers, HTTP response headers and add cache control. I right click one more time, response headers, server. And I'll show you why I've done this in a minute. So I'm on HTTP2 and that is better than HTTP1. My hosting provider or my CDN is using HTTP2. It's more efficient than HTTP1. If you've got HTTP 1.1 there, for instance, you need to ask your hosting provider why they're not using HTTP 2. Now, some mobile phone browsers can't use it, but definitely all the desktop browsers can. And it makes not a massive difference in download time, but it is far more efficient. So it might save you a, well, maybe half a second. I don't know, but it will be significant, but not massive. I know I'm on HTTP2, so I'm happy. Now, I don't want to see style sheets, etc. I just want to see images, so back to that. Now, for type, there's WebP there. Now, WebP is Google's image format. Now, my image optimizing plugin in WordPress works like this. On the fly, what it does is it looks at the image, the JPEG image, and says, I can make that size of that image in terms of bytes smaller by using WebP because it's got a better compression method. If it can do that, it will do that. If it can't make a saving in terms of bytes, it will not convert it. So most of these images here are WebP. So if someone tries to download the image and open it up in, let's say, Preview or Windows Photo Viewer, they're not going to see anything at the moment because WebP is not really sort of supported by what I call photo viewers. So anyway, WebP, more efficient, done by my image optimizing plugin. Initiator is who's asked for this file to be downloaded. Index is the page. And then there's Theme Punch Essential, which is Theme Punch Essential Grid, which is my gallery plugin. So I leave initiated there. Some people don't like it and get rid of it, but I leave it there. Size is massively important. So if you sort on size, you'll see your biggest file size at the bottom there, or click it that way around. You have the biggest one at the top. Click here, it changes to that. You can have headers. Preview, response, or timing. The best one is preview because you can see the image and you can click and close it and go back to there. But the minute you click down there on the name, it will do that and bring that up. So in preview or wherever you were last. So preview is the best one. And it shows you the size and the dimensions as well. So let's get rid of that. So I now have changed the sorting. I want to come back to the waterfall here. And the waterfall is set up for showing start time. So when you click, you want to make sure that one of those is closest to the left as it could possibly be. So my image were loaded in that order, basically, the start time order. So you're going down to that one there. So I could make that bigger, but to be honest with you, I don't use it a lot. If you mouse over, you can see what's going on, and that's quite complex. You've got to know a lot, a lot about HTTP and networking to really understand that. But basically, you could just sort it basically on start time. So it, you know, it's showing you what gets loaded first and what gets loaded last, basically. Simple as that. So cache control, and if I wind this out a little bit more, that's 369 days in seconds. Now, I've done it via my caching plugin called WP Rocket. The reason I've done a year is if I change a page, my caching plugin knows it's been changed and that gets recorded. So if someone, let's say, comes in January and looks at my site and I've not changed anything, it gets cached by their browser. Then if they come back in December and I say that I've not changed anything, when they go to my page, my server would do a, what they call a freshness check and say, no, no, nothing's changed. You might as well use the cache from the browser. Now, of course, they might have cleared the cache or not have a caching activated, whatever. So basically... There could be a few problems, but for most sort of end users, this is very efficient. It stops the internet from being overloaded. They're happy as well. They're seeing the page quickly. A year is a bit excessive, some people might say. Some people go for a month. Some people go for eight hours. I'm taking a risk because there can be some problems sometimes. I don't want to go into it in too much detail, especially on WordPress. It's called nonce. 
Yes, it's a bad word in the UK, but it means number once. And basically, you can have problems where stuff doesn't show up. But it hasn't happened to me yet on WordPress, so I'm pretty happy with what I've got. If it did cost me problems, I would just drop the cache time to probably eight hours or something like that. It's not the end of the world, but, you know, it's nice to, to think if I don't change something, a year later and someone comes to my website, it's coming from their cache. It's saving a lot of resources. It will load really fast. So that's caching, guys. Now, CDN or server here, it's showing Bunny CDN. If you're on, I think, WordPress, it will mainly show Apache there, but I'm using a CDN to deliver my images and most of my other stuff as well, you know, my CSS files, the HTML. Now, this is part of my image optimizing plugin called EWWWIO for Image Optimizer. It has a built-in CDN called ExactDN, but here's it, here it's called Bunny CDN because the guy who's written the plugin has gone to Bunny and said, can I have a certain amount of bandwidth every month and paid for it in advance, let's say, and charges me $9, but for $9 a month, I get everything served by the CDN. And also it does the resizing on the fly and CDN resizing is far, far better than let's say WordPress doing it. And when you do it from the CDN, there's less browser resizing. Also, I will point out here when I click on an image in a minute, explain about pixel dimensions, why you should really care about them as much as you should care about, you know, your file size as well. So anyway, that's it really. If I start clicking on something, you can see that list get bigger like so. So let's, you know, go for these images and see what they are. So if I sort and size now, go like that, that's the largest image. If I click on it, it's 498 kilobytes. It's 2000 by 1295 pixels. I've gone for 2000 pixels on the longest edge because the way you've got to look at it is like this. Mobile phones have very high pixel density screens like retina screens. A retina is a proprietary name, by the way. So you should really say high pixel density screens. That means there's a lot of pixels in, a, in an inch, let's say, in a linear inch. So given a, an image, is, let's say, is 100 by 100, as the pixel density goes up with the screen, that image will get smaller and smaller and smaller. There'll come a point when the browser will say, no, nope, I've got to double the size of this image, and it will double the size, and it will look awful. Because browsers can upsample images, and it ha often happens. And if you haven't got a, a large enough image in the first place, it will double the size and it will look awful. I think 2000 is a kind of my outer limit. I was going to go with 1500, but I thought 2000, so my images look pretty reasonable. But what I did though is I really crushed the file size down. My route is this, you know, I optimized the image by coming out, let's say 30 or 40% JPEG quality from Lightroom or Photoshop. And then I bring it into WordPress and the image optimizing plugin takes even more data out. The reason there's more data to be taken now is that Adobe's compression algorithms aren't very sort of uh, aggressive and there can be further lossless compression done, which will take a small amount of data out, or you can go for lossy compression and take even more data out with the risk of degrading the quality of the file. I've gone for the maximum inside my image optimizing plugin. So yeah, it's a big subject. I have covered it in other videos and I have covered it in my web pages, but you must optimize your images. And I'm just mentioning the pixel dimensions because of these high pixel density screens. And there's so many different devices looking at your web page. You've got to think like that all the time saying, well, if pixel density goes up, you know, some of these images will look pretty awful if they get doubled in size. And that does happen. It's not likely to happen very much with a 2000 pixel image, uh, but if I wanted to cater for a 5K Mac, let's say, with a full screen, a full viewport on a browser, 4,000 pixels would be the longest edge I'd have to go for. So really, that's not going to happen because no one's going to look at my website because it'll take too long to download. Don't worry too much about quality. Worry more about file size. Decide on what pixel dimensions you want, and that's longest edge normally for your photos. Because if you go too small and you go to low JPEG quality, it will look awful. But some people might put up with that, but they might not buy your photographs. If you go too large in terms of pixel dimensions and JPEG quality, you're going to have a problem. So the compromise I've done is 30, 40 percent or maybe 50 percent JPEG quality, further optimization with the plugin. And I've gone for 2000 pixels on the longest edge. That's my choice. The pixel dimensions. That's it, really. I don't want to deal with any more. If you want to get back to that view, just click like that. 
So if you're looking at images, you might say, well, I, I need to make that smaller. It's 490 kilobytes. I would say anything above, you know, 500 is bad. I honestly do. Basically, 500 is my limit, my benchmark, really. I hope you got something from this. To go through this quickly again, remember that menu there. To get into problems, go to settings, go to restore defaults and reload. Network, disable cache, hide data URLs. It just takes some rubbish out. IMG, and then command and control R to keep reloading or come up here. You don't have to disable cache. You could, you know, do it differently each time. If I go and disable cache now and do a soft reload, guess what? It's going to come mostly from the memory of my browser, you know? So there you go. That's how it all works. So it's pulling it from the cache. That's what caching is all about. I think that's it, guys. I can't think of anything else. It's just using these testing tools, but I love developer mode because I, I can really look at my images and say, does that need to be 490 kilobytes? Can I make the you know the quality less to get a better file size, you know, in terms of small file size? That's it, guys. Thanks very much.